Hey everyone, and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. Uh, we're your go-to source for staying up to date on HIV testing here in the U.S. Yeah, that's right. We aim to give you the information you need to make informed decisions about your health. And today we're diving into some news that has the potential to change the landscape of HIV prevention as we know it. It's a potential breakthrough in HIV vaccine research using mRNA technology. A development that could impact us all. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a step back. You know, for decades, researchers have been trying to develop a vaccine for HIV. But this virus is a tough nut to crack. It's true, HIV is constantly mutating. Making it incredibly difficult for our immune systems to keep up. And that's why this new research is so exciting. It uses mRNA technology. Which has already shown promise with other vaccines. What's fascinating here is that this technology works differently than traditional vaccines. Okay, so how so? Instead of introducing a weakened or inactive virus mRNA vaccines, deliver a snippet of genetic code directly into our cells. Think of it like sending instructions on how to build a specific protein. Interesting. In this case, it's the code for HIV's envelope protein. Which is? Which is what the virus uses to latch onto and infect our cells. Okay, so our cells get these instructions and then what? Well, our cells become mini factories, producing copies of the envelope protein themselves. So they're producing copies of the bad stuff. Well, not exactly. It's like showing our immune system a wanted poster, you know? Okay. Teaching it to recognize and attack the virus. So our bodies are basically training for the fight without ever encountering the actual virus. That's pretty amazing. It is. And what's even more remarkable is that this approach seems to be triggering a type of immune response we haven't seen to this extent before. You're talking about those broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs, right? Yes, those were mentioned in the research and they seem to be a big deal. Absolutely they are. Previous HIV vaccine trials mostly focused on triggering antibodies that could only target a few specific strains of the virus. But HIV mutates so rapidly that these antibodies quickly became ineffective. Right. BNABs, on the other hand, are like the elite forces of the immune system. Oh, wow. They can recognize and bind to parts of the HIV envelope protein that don't change as much. Even as the virus mutates. Exactly. So it's like finding a weak spot in the virus's armor, something that stays vulnerable even as the rest of the virus changes. Precisely. Okay. This means BNABs can effectively block HIV from infecting our cells, even if the virus tries to mutate and evade other types of antibodies. Oh, that's huge. And the results from this recent Moderna and National Institutes of Health Phase IV trial, well, they were pretty impressive. 70% of participants developed these BNABs. 70%. That's a number we haven't seen before in HIV vaccine research. It's really remarkable. It sounds incredibly promising. Are we on the verge of an HIV vaccine becoming a reality? Well, these results are certainly exciting. It's important to remember that we're still in the early stages of research. Okay. Phase IV trials are designed to test safety and effectiveness in a smaller group of people. Got it. And they help determine the optimal dosage and schedule. So what are the next steps? The next step is to move to phase three trials, which involve a much larger and more diverse group of participants. Okay, so bigger trials. This is where we really get to see how the vaccine performs in the real world. The plan is to launch these phase three trials in late 2025 with about 30,000 participants worldwide. Wow, that's a huge undertaking. What are some of the challenges they might face in these larger trials? Well, one of the biggest hurdles is manufacturing enough of the vaccine for such a large scale trial. I can imagine. It's a complex and expensive process. And then there's the challenge of ensuring equitable access to the vaccine if it proves successful. Right especially for communities most impacted by HIV globally. Those are definitely important considerations. So yeah. even with these incredible results, it sounds like there's still a long road ahead before this potential vaccine could be widely available. There is, but this research is incredibly encouraging. It gives us a real reason to be optimistic about the future of HIV prevention. That's for sure. Now, before we move on to discussing the global implications of this research, I think it's important to acknowledge that even if this vaccine is a success, it's not going to be a magic bullet, right? That's right. HIV prevention requires a multifaceted approach. Okay. With that in mind, let's move on to part two, where we'll delve deeper into the global implications of this research and discuss the trials currently underway in South Africa and Brazil. Welcome back to the deep dive, as we discuss in part one. The recent findings from the Moderna NIH mRNA HIV vaccine trial have generated a lot of excitement, but this research isn't just happening in a lab somewhere. It's going global. That's right. The fight against HIV is a global one, 
and the next phase of these trials will be taking place in South Africa and Brazil. These are two countries that have been significantly impacted by HIV, but they also offer unique advantages for this type of research. Absolutely. Let's start with South Africa. It has one of the highest HIV rates in the world. Wow. Which means researchers can study the vaccine's effectiveness in a real-world setting where HIV transmission is high. So it makes sense to test it where it's most needed. Exactly. And beyond the sheer number of cases, South Africa also has a diverse population with multiple HIV subtypes circulating within the country. Oh, I see. So they can gather data on how the vaccine performs against different strains of the virus. Precisely now, shifting our focus to Brazil, we see a different set of advantages. While the overall HIV prevalence is lower than in South Africa, there's a concerning trend of rising infection rates within certain communities. Like? Particularly among men who have sex with men. So by focusing on this specific population in Brazil, researchers can tailor the trial to address a particular area where HIV transmission is increasing. That's right. And Brazil also has a well-established infrastructure for conducting clinical trials, especially within these communities. So it's a combination of factors that make both South Africa and Brazil strategic locations for these trials. Yeah. But it's not just about the science. Is it, there's an ethical component to consider as well. Absolutely. In the past, marginalized communities have often been excluded from or underrepresented in medical research. But in these trials, inclusivity is a top priority. I'm glad to hear that. Why is that so important? Well, for one, it's a matter of social justice. Everyone deserves access to the potential benefits of medical advancements. Right. But it's also crucial for the science itself. How so? Different populations may respond to vaccines in slightly different ways due to genetics, lifestyle, or environmental factors. Uh -huh. Having a diverse participant pool helps ensure that the vaccine is truly universal in its effectiveness. That makes a lot of sense. So we have these trials launching in two very different parts of the world. Mm. What kind of challenges do you anticipate researchers might encounter as they move forward? Well, one of the biggest challenges in any long-term trial is participant retention. These trials can last for several years, and participants need to attend regular checkups and adhere to the study protocol. I imagine that can be difficult, especially in areas where access to healthcare and transportation might be limited. That's right. So researchers need to work closely with local communities, build trust, provide clear communication, and address any potential barriers to participation. It sounds like community engagement is essential for the success of these trials. It absolutely is. Another challenge is managing expectations. While these early results are incredibly promising, we need to avoid creating false hope. Okay. Developing a safe and effective vaccine is a long and complex process. It's important to be realistic about the timeline. Exactly. Now, let's shift gears a bit and talk about the potential impact of a successful mRNA HIV vaccine on a global scale. How could it change the landscape of HIV prevention and treatment? Well, it has the potential to be a game changer. We could see a dramatic reduction in new HIV infections, mm. especially in regions with high prevalence rates. It could save millions of lives. It could also alleviate the burden on healthcare systems that are currently struggling to cope with the costs of HIV treatment and care. And I imagine it could have a profound impact on reducing the stigma associated with HIV. Absolutely. A vaccine could help shift public perception and create a more supportive and understanding environment for people living with HIV. That would be a huge step forward. But even if this vaccine proves successful, it's not a standalone solution, right? Right. It needs to be part of a comprehensive approach to HIV prevention, which, which is, includes existing methods like pre-EP, regular testing, and access to treatment. So it's adding another layer of protection not replacing what we already have. Precisely. And we can't forget about the ongoing research into finding a cure for HIV while a vaccine would be a major victory. The ultimate goal is to eradicate the virus completely. Okay, so we have these global trials underway and we're starting to imagine what a future with an effective HIV vaccine might look like. But let's bring the conversation back home to the United States. How does this research connect to HIV prevention and testing efforts here in the U.S.? That's a great question, and we'll explore that in more detail in part three. We'll also discuss how listeners can stay informed about these developments and what they can do to support the fight against HIV in their own communities. Welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast for this final part of our deep dive into the groundbreaking mRNA HIV vaccine research. We've covered a lot of ground, haven't we? We have, from the science behind this new vaccine technology to the trials taking place around the world. It's clear that this research has the potential to change the fight against HIV as we know it. It really does. And 
While these global trials are critical, it's important to remember that the fight against HIV is happening right here in the United States, too. Exactly. And that's what we're going to focus on in this final part of our deep dive. We're going to explore how these global advancements connect to HIV prevention and testing efforts here at home. It's all connected. You know, advancements in one part of the world can have a ripple effect everywhere. Even though these specific trials aren't taking place in the U.S. right now, the findings will undoubtedly influence future research and prevention strategies here. So we're all part of a global community when it comes to science and public health. We so even if this vaccine isn't available in the U.S., immediately, it could pave the way for future trials and potential access down the road. Exactly. And in the meantime, it's crucial to remember that we already have effective tools for HIV prevention here in the U.S. Uh, Pre-EP, for example, has been a game changer in reducing new infections. That's right. PREP, or pre-exposure prophylaxis, is a daily medication that can significantly reduce the risk of contracting HIV. It's a powerful tool, and it's readily available in the United States. And, of course, regular HIV testing remains essential. Absolutely. Knowing your status is empowering. It is. It allows you to make informed decisions about your health and take the necessary steps to protect yourself and others. And that's where your podcast, the HIV RNA Test Guide, comes in. Right. We provide you with all the information you need to find testing centers near you, understand the different types of tests available, and navigate the testing process. We're here to be a resource to answer your questions and help you take control of your sexual health. It's exactly. Knowledge is power now for our listeners who are eager to stay updated on the progress of these mRNA HIV vaccine trials. Where can they find reliable information? The World Health Organization's website is an excellent source for tracking the latest developments in HIV vaccine research. They provide regular updates on clinical trials, including the ones for the mRNA vaccine. Perfect. And beyond staying informed, what can our listeners do to support the fight against HIV right here in the United States? Well, there are many ways to get involved supporting organizations like the HIV RNA Test Guide that are dedicated to HIV prevention testing and education is a great start. Absolutely. Donating to reputable HIV AIDS research organizations can help fuel the search for a cure and better treatments. And volunteering in local HIV AIDS service organizations allows you to make a tangible difference in your community. And we can't forget the power of simply talking about HIV openly and honestly with friends, family, and colleagues. Right. Breaking down the stigma and spreading accurate information can have a huge impact. It can, the more we talk about HIV, the more we normalize it and the closer we get to a world where it's no longer a source of fear or shame. Well said. As we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave our listeners with this thought. How might a successful HIV vaccine change the landscape of HIV prevention and treatment right here in the United States? What would that future look like? It's an exciting quote and to consider. It's a future where new infections plummet, where people living with HIV thrive, and where the stigma surrounding the virus fades away. It's a future worth fighting for. And remember, you don't have to wait for a vaccine to start making a difference. You can get involved today. Stay informed, support research, talk to your friends, and take charge of your own sexual health. And the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast will be here to support you every step of the way. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay well.